Right, so this little ride, we're going to go through my camping setup on the bike. So I've got the bike loaded at the moment with the tent, the top box, the panniers and the tank bag. And I need to get out as well because I've just changed the rear brake pads. So I need to just start to get those bedded in. Right, let's get on the move. And then we'll talk about this setup and what we've got on the bike. Well, a nice evening showing what eight o'clock it's still 18 degrees let's go and find somewhere to pull up and have a look at this setup We found a little place to pull up. Right. Let's set the helmet off. Let's go through the setup on this bike. So this is my setup. VFR 800 2008. So I've got it loaded with the side panniers, both sides. I've got the top box on. And I've got my Lomo roll bag. And my Givy tank bag. This is the setup. I'll be using for a five night camping trip. So quite a long camp. So what I do is I go with, in my Lomo bag, is my regatta four man tent, full standing height, so I can stand with plenty of bedroom in the tent. So it's quite a big tent, but it packs perfectly into this Lomo bag. So what I've tried to do with this next tour we're doing is I want to transfer the weight from the top of the bike more down to the side to the panniers. So what I used to do previously, I used to have all the camping gear in this top box. But what I've decided to do now is in the top box, I'm just going to put clothes. So I'm going to have my pillow in there, which is lightweight, a hoodie, a few t-shirts, a couple of pairs of shorts, trainers, my sliders, some socks, pants. And then just go with the usual toothbrush, deodorant, toothpaste, shampoo, and my microfiber towel. So I've got more lightweight for the top box. So what I like to do with the panniers, I like to use a double sleeping bag. So I split the sleeping bag. I put one half in that pannier and one half in that pannier. Then what I've done is I've brought the camping equipment from the top box and I've brought that weight down below. So in this side pannier, with the one side of the sleeping bag, I've got the electric hookup lead and my Trekology UL140 airbed. In this pannier, I've got the other half of the sleeping bag and I've got my electric pump, I've got my kettle, my mug, so I've tried to balance the weight of those equally. In my tank bag, in this top section here, I keep the drone, and then in the main part will be any electrics, USB chargers, plugs, anything like that. So that's my camping setup. I try to keep it minimal. I don't want too much packed up here high. I don't want to go too big with it. I don't want to make it top heavy. So I want to try and keep the weight down low. And that's really is all I need for my setup. Now the campsite we're going to in July, we're doing our South Coast tour and the campsite, they've agreed to lend us 
their big double gas barbecue. So it saves the 12 of us having to take camping stoves, extra things like that. So we can cook our food on this big barbecue between all 12 of us. So that's cut down on taking camping stoves and cookers. They've also agreed that we could have some stuff delivered to the campsite ahead of time. So what I've done, I've normally got quite a small little Trekology pack-up chair, the ones what, you know, it all folds up like into a tiny little bag. But what we're doing on this one, we've just purchased just a cheap folding camping chair, just the ones you see everywhere in Tesco. So we've ordered one of those for £10 and we're having that delivered to the campsite so we can use it when we're there. I haven't got to worry about packing it on the bike. And then when we're done, I'll just leave it at the campsite. You know, don't even bother bringing it back. So that's my setup. And I think that's what will work for me this year, is bringing the weight down. But this tent, this tent is massive, but it fits perfectly in this bag. That's either got the poles in there, the pegs in there, the ground sheet in there. That's everything. And that's a 40 litre, 40 litre Lomo bag, which is the end roll. So it's easy to slide in. So it's just an end rolled in one. I have got some smaller ones of these, a five litre and a 10 litre, which I can strap on there if there's anything else I need to take or put in there, which is ideal, I suppose, for keeping your waterproofs in. But I've got enough room in the top box for the waterproofs. So there we go. That's my camping setup. So we're looking forward to this tour. Quite a few of us have got the, the hard luggage. I know uh, Goose hasn't got hard luggage on his Suzuki Bandit and more than likely he has to stack quite high. But, um, you know, he has got soft panniers, so whether he's going to try and use those this year just to try and lower the weight down. But that works for me. And I've got to say, the only time you notice any difference, a lot of people worry about riding with all the weight on the bike. And, OK, on stationing like this, it, it does become a little bit tricky. But once you're riding, you, you know, you, you don't notice the weight. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't get... I don't get put off or scared by carrying weight on the bike. Some people don't like it. It makes them a little bit nervous with it. But I'm, I'm completely fine with it. I trust the bike. The bike's designed to take a, a pillion. So the weight I've got there is, I'd probably say... It's probably less than a pillion or even if it's equal so you know the bike is designed to carry weight on the back it's all perfectly balanced out i've got it nicely balanced so there's nothing to worry about so roll on a week's time when we head down south to do our south coast tour so the exhaust has been repaired we've welded that that's working fine i've done the rear brake pads it's had oil and a filter change done coolant's been done so she's all ready to rock. All she does, all she does, all she needs now is a good clean at the moment. At the moment, I haven't cleaned her because I've been doing that much work on it. It's just been left, but all this is from Elam Valley, all the splatters. I mean, I might even, to be honest with you, I've got room on there. I might bring the camping chair back with me. I'll see. Okay. So if anything, this is probably your worst part, is stationary with the bike. But you know, the bike's only uh, difficult to manoeuvre when it's stationary. And obviously you have got the weight of the bike. But while it's... When it's moving... It's completely fine. And the only thing you have to watch is filtering. You know, you have to take into consideration you've got uh, panniers on. And I think the main problem being is when you don't ride all year round with panniers on, you're quite used to just nipping between the traffic. It becomes second nature. So you do have to take that double double stop, double thought to think. I've got panniers on here. But if anything, the journey down to our campsite in Dulverton, Tiverton Way, is we're basically we're motorway all the way down, M5. All the way down. So you know, if there is any traffic on the motorway, there normally is quite enough room in motorway traffic to filter. The weight isn't making that much difference to the bike, to be honest. Um, I can't really flat foot this bike properly, but even with this weight on, the suspension's not gone down that much. It's gone down a little bit, I can feel it. 
my feet are a bit more flat on the floor, but you know, the back end of the bike's not. Its arse is not dragging on the floor, so there's nothing to worry about there. You know, and a lot of people forget that you know your bikes are designed to carry a pillion. You know, your suspension is it's a lot stronger than you realise on the back. I think it's just people's. You know, it's it's in it's in your head that you've got all this stuff on the back, and you think the bike's unstable. You know, you just need to compensate, but obviously you're braking, you you want to brake earlier. You know, you approach the cornering. You know, but you have got, you know, it is in your subconscious that you've got weight on the bike, so it's not as if you you forget about it. But I'm quite happy with this, quite happy with this weight. I'm more than happy to, to ride all day long like this. But the biggest difference for those who've done it is when you take the, the weight off the bike, the luggage, and how different the bike feels. I mean, it, you know, it's you very easily get used to riding the bike with the weight on it. You know, it only takes a couple of minutes and, and you're there. You're comfortable. But the difference is, is when you get to your campsite and you unload, take everything off, is the difference then in the weight of the bike. You surely notice the difference then. It's very bizarre. The bike feels more different when the weight's off it than it does getting used to the bike once you've just put weight on it. But anyhow, that's my setup. That's me doing a big camping trip and what I use. You know, the campsite's been absolutely fantastic, letting us borrow items from them. And, you know, if I was doing a five night or somewhere else where we hadn't got the luxury of borrowing a, a gas barbecue, but, you know, we would need to take a camping stove, but camping stove is not that big. You know, I wouldn't need any extra baggage on this bike to take the stuff I'm not taking, like my camping chair. That would easily fit in the top box. So would the camping stove with my clothes. All I've done at the moment by not taking them is I've just slightly reduced the amount of weight the bike's taking. I'm not really gaining or losing too much floor space in panniers and top box. We'll see you probably in just over a week's time. Nice and early on Saturday morning, the 24th of July, as the group head off to do our summer tour, which we were meant to be back in the south of France this year. We were going to go down to Limoges and go and see our Dorset Lane in the Massacre Village, uh, but with how things panned out and, you know, it, it's just been all over the place this year, you know. Countries going into red, amber, back to red, green. Do you need a, a vaccine passport? Do you not? And I said to the guys, you know, I said, it's it's an headache. I mean, last year was hard just doing Normandy with nine of us, and we'd only really touched on this uh, travel restrictions, and that was hard enough. Um, you know, it's not so bad if it's just one or two of you, but, you know, when you're booking and planning for 12 people, it's... It's a mammoth task. And I said, right, you know, if, if everything was normal and none of this had happened, then this year we would definitely be abroad. But we're making the most of what we got this year in this country. There's some beautiful places down south. We're going to visit all the fantastic parts. Woolacombe, Elfricombe, Bude, Torquay, Paynton, Weymouth, Paul. You know, we're going to visit some lovely places. And fingers crossed, we get the weather for it. We have some decent weather. Oh, one thing I forgot to add, which is in my camping kit, is my electric heater. I've got a camper electric heater, so it's a proper heater for camping. And I know you're thinking it's July. You know, you're taking a heater in July. But the reason we decided to take heaters was, if we do get any bad weather, and we get wet, there's nothing worse than getting back after riding all day in the rain to a tent where it's raining all night and you've got no way of drawing anything and you're cold and damp yourself. So, I says, you know, it's... The heater is more of a, a little emergency survival kit that we might need to rely on. But I doubt it. Because if we've got good feelings, we're going to have good weather. So from now till next week, be good. And we'll see you then. Oosh, boosh, boosh.